Before we start this activity, there's a couple of chores we've got to take care of. We have to enable macros on our workbook. So before you open the activity, if you have the activity open, go ahead and close it and then right click on the activity and go to properties and that menu that pops up. You should get a dialog box and at the bottom of the dialog box, you should see this option right here. You want to check unblock, click apply, and then click OK. At least that's how it works for the Office 365 and Windows 10 version. If you're using a different um, operating system or a different version of Excel, you may have to do it a different way. So Mac, I think, is different. Windows 11 might be a little bit different as well. So you may have to take a second to Google those. I can't cover every single possible option. But again, for Windows 10 and Office 365, this is how you do it. Right click on the start file, go to properties. And then when you get that dialog box up, that pops up at the bottom, you just check unblock, click apply, and then click OK. So that is step one, enabling macros. The next thing we have to do is add the developer tab on the ribbon. To do that, we just right click anywhere on the ribbon here, and then we go to customize the ribbon. So we just right click anywhere on the ribbon here and then go to customize ribbon. When we go to customize ribbon, we want to make sure we're at customize ribbon here on the left. We see a whole bunch of options here on the right, and we want to make sure the one that says developer is checked. Where's that? Mine is already checked. Yours probably won't be. Um, so just make sure this is checked. It's already checked. You're fine. Click OK. Then you should see you have the developer tab here on the ribbon with the macro stuff, control stuff, XML, all that kind of things. I'm going to go ahead and have the Microsoft robot read the instructions or the first part of the scenario to us, and then we'll jump into the the um, tasks for the activity. Lydia Rosales is a sales manager at EMD, a software company providing software by subscription to healthcare organizations, such as hospitals and clinics. She is developing an Excel workbook for sales representatives to use when contacting clients and prospective clients. She is also using the workbook to track quarterly sales the representatives have made. She asks for your help in completing the workbook and making it more attractive and easier to use. Okay, so that covers our scenario. Let's jump into the tasks for the activity. Step one wants us to go to the practice tab or the practice worksheet in our workbook. So let's go ahead and click on the, or the prices, sorry, the prices worksheet on our workbook. So let's go ahead and click on that. And then it wants us to insert some word art. So we go to the insert tab on the ribbon. And over here on the far right, we see the, um, text group and we're going to click the insert word art button. The option it wants us to choose is this right here, fill gray accent color one shadow. So I'm going to choose this option right here, first row, second column. Then it wants us to enter the text software and service prices, software and service prices. Part C wants us to change the font size to 36. So I'm just going to select the entirety of the text there and I get this little quick formatting button and I'm going to change the font size to 36 there. You can also go home tab on the ribbon and change it in the font group like you normally would. Part D of question number one wants us to reposition this so that it's in the B1 to D1 range, the B1 to D1 range. So I'm just going to drag it up there and put it kind of comfortably in the B1 to D1 range. Um, I guess this is a little late, but I wanted to remind everyone that sometimes these activities change and I don't notice it in time to update my video. So you should always make sure to follow along with the instructions, print out the instructions, pull them up on a second monitor, whatever you have to do, and follow along with the instructions to make sure that what your activity wants you to do is the same thing that's going on with the video. It'll also help you with the entering the text and some of the information like that. Question number two wants us to edit some notes. So we see in the top right corner of some of these cells, there's a little red arrow that indicates that there's a note there. So if we click on cell B2 or yeah, cell B2 here, then we see that there is a little note. When we hover over it after selecting it. We see that there's the note there. There is a typo in it and it wants us to fix the typo. So this changes a lot depending on the version of Excel that you're working with. Um, you can go to the review tab. So after you select the cell, go to the review tab and there should be a notes button somewhere around here and you can go to edit note or a bunch of options for working with notes. You can right click and you should see an edit note here option here as well, at least in most versions of Excel. If, if you don't see those options there, do a quick Google search and see if you can um, figure out another way to work with it. But notes are something that have kind of 
come and gone and um, changed and been manipulated several times throughout um, Excel's lifetime. So you may have to do it a little bit different. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and click edit note here since I'm on there. So I just selected the cell, right click edit note. And then this is the word it wanted us to change. Um, so I'm going to erase that and I'm going to type in the new word, which is combining. So that's all I did is I deleted that old word there and I put it, replaced it with the new word combining. Don't press enter after you finish typing it. That'll just add another line and it will score incorrectly. So we just want to click away when we're done editing that. Part B wants us to read the note in D4. So I'm going to go ahead and click down here in cell D4. And we can see that there was a note for us. It says that this note was only for us. And so it wants us to delete that. Again, we can do that up here in the review tab in the note section. We can go there and edit, and manipulate the note that way. I'm going to right click on it and we see delete note in that menu that pops up there. So I just selected D4, right clicked on it, and then we should see delete note as an option there. Part C wants us to add a comment, not a note, a comment to cell C8. So let's go ahead and click on cell C8 down here. I'm in cell C8. And to add a comment, again, we can go to the review tab and there's the options for a new comment right there. Or we can right click and go to new comment here. I'm going to do this one just because I am happen to be here. And then we type out the text that it tells us to in your instructions, which should be, should I add medical billing to this package, question mark. And then we press this little green button there to submit that. Okay, we have added a comment. Anytime we click on that, it'll pop up. And just an FYI, comments are another thing that you may run into issues with. Notes and comments are something that have kind of come and gone or been changed and manipulated a lot in various iterations of Excels or Excel and different updates. So if you don't have it, you may also be able to update your Excel and you will get the current features and current versions of those. So that might be worth trying if you're encountering a problem with that. Question number three wants us to change the theme color and theme format. It wants us to add custom ones of those custom theme, um, custom font, custom color, custom theme. So if we go to the page layout tab on the ribbon, page layout tab on the ribbon, over here on the left hand side, we should have some theme options. It wants us to add a custom color first. So if we go to the colors button, click on that, we see at the bottom, there's a customize colors option. Customize colors option. Go ahead and click on that. The first adjustment it wanted us to make is text background dark two. So if we click on that line, so this line right here, we just click on the drop down, and it told us it wanted us to change this color to blue gray accent to darker 50%. So if we go down here, it should be this option, blue, gray, exit to darker 50%. So we just left click on that. We've now set that color. It wants us to give this a name. So we go ahead and change the name here. Lowercase E, capital E, M, capital D, sorry. Lowercase E, capital M, capital D. So that's the name for it. And then we click OK. So all we did here was add one custom color, a name, and then we click Save. Next, it wants us to add a custom font. So in that same group, page layout, same themes group, we see the option there, font or fonts. Let's go ahead and click on that. And in that drop down at the very bottom, there's a customized fonts option. Now, there are a number of ways we can find the fonts that it tells us to. We click this drop down and scroll down forever, but we can also just type in the name. Well, in this case, Century Schoolbook is what it wanted for the top. But just in case it's not for you, I'm going to show you how to do that. We just select the text in there and start typing Cent uh, Century Schoolbook. And as it starts to come up, we can select that. Then for the body font, we can go ahead and start typing in the font that it wanted us to use there, which is Calibre Light. So I'm just going to select again, just put my selector in here, select all that, delete it, and start typing in Calibre Light. So again, instead of scrolling through that big list, all we did was type it in. Then for the name, I'm going to erase the information in there, and I'm going to type in what it tells us to, which is lowercase e, capital M, capital D. So again, just to recap, these are the two fonts that I wanted us to use for the heading font, Century Schoolbook, for the body font, Calibre Light. Again, you can do it by clicking the drop-down menu and scrolling around and finding it. It should be in alphabetical order, or you can just type in the name in there and then... Um, that should work too. Then we click save.
Part C of question number two wants us to save the settings as a custom theme. So over here in the themes group, page layout themes group, we click the themes button and there's a save current theme and that will save the theme that we just applied. So we click on that and it wants us to name it lowercase e, capital M, capital D. And then we just click save. Question number four wants us to go to the sales worksheet. So let's go to the sales worksheet. So what number four wants us to do is um, apply a currency setting to this range, C4 through F8, and then H4 through F8. So I'm just selecting the range E4, uh, C4 through F8 and H4 through F8. Um, we can go to the home tab on the ribbon. And then over here in the numbers group, we have the numbers format options button or advanced settings button. Let's go ahead and click on that. It's that little arrow in the bottom right corner and click on that and then go to currency, go to currency over here and then zero decimal places. And we should just be able to click. Okay. So currency zero decimal places. Okay. Question number five wants us to add spark lines, but it wants us to do it using the quick analysis tool. So the easiest way to do that um, for this range right here is to select C4 through F8. So we just make the selection C4 through F8 on smooth motion. Just left click up here on C4, swipe down to F8, and we see the we get this little um, quick analysis button that pops up in the bottom right. We're going to left click on that, click on spark lines, and then choose the line option. I'm going to go ahead and do that one more time real quick. So we just made the selection C4 through C8. Nothing different or weird about it. We just highlighted that section. We click the quick analysis button. We click spark line and then we click line. And we should get our spark lines there quick and easy. Question number six wants us to add a legend to the bottom of this chart. So we just left click to select the chart, just left click to select the chart. And then we want to click on the add charts element button right here. And then we go down here to legend. And again, there's that little tiny arrow on the right of the legend column click on that and we choose bottom. Question number seven wants us to create a custom view. So 7A wants us to take the rows six through eight. So row six through row eight. So all we're going to do is highlight row six and row eight or row six, seven and eight, row six through eight. We're just going to highlight those right click and go to hide in that menu. So we hid row six, seven, and eight. And then we're going to save this as a custom view by going to the view tab on the ribbon. And then over somewhere in the workbook views group, we have the custom view button. Let's go ahead and click on the custom view button. And then we're going to click add. And we're going to name this software as software. We're just going to name it software. And then we click OK. Question number eight wants us to show one of the other layouts or custom views that was previously saved. So we'll use that same view tab, custom view button. Let's go ahead and click on that. And we see a list of the custom views, their software that we just created, and then page layout, which was already in there. We're going to click on that, make sure it's highlighted, and then we'll click show. Question number nine wants us to go to the client information worksheet. So I'm going to go ahead and go down here and click on the client information worksheet. The first thing it wants us to do here is click on cell A25, type in equals, and then click on cell B4 up here. And we should see that it um, uses a name reference for the cell. So we have equals first name, and then we just press in. Question number 10 wants us to insert an option button in cell D10. So let's go up here to the developer tab on the ribbon, developer tab on the ribbon. And we see in the controls group, there should be this option right here that says insert or this button right here that says insert. And the first row, last column there, there should be one that says option button. It'll look like just like one of these, one of these little circles, but with a dot in it, it's called an option button form control. We're going to choose that. Once we have selected the button, we're going to draw it like we would draw a shape. So just like you would draw a regular rectangle, we're going to draw it where it told us to, which was somewhere in the kind of D10 range right here. So somewhere in that range, and I'm just going to kind of position it approximately there. Again, um, we can fix the size and stuff like that a little bit later. But once we have drawn our button in there, what I'm going to do is select the text on the inside and delete it. And I'm going to type in the new text that it wants us to put, which is demonstration. 
So it wants us to put demonstration as the text there. Quick pro tip for working with these buttons is sometimes when you're trying to click on them, Excel thinks you're just trying to interact with it. So it thinks you want to check the, the mark there. But if you hold the left control key on the keyboard, so just hold down the left control key on the keyboard, instead what it will do is select it. So instead of trying to interact with it, it will select it. And then it makes it a little easier to put our cursor in there and select on the text or click on it and move things around. They can be a little finicky to work with. Have that control Z, undo, control Y, redo kind of keys in your mind. So that is it. But that's just the key trick is hold that left control key and you can ma manipulate it. You can also go to the design mode here. And sometimes that will help um, Excel understand that you're trying to edit the button. You're not trying to interact with it. Okay, I hope that helps. So back to our task. So question number 10, part B wanted us to put demonstration as the name. Part C wants us to link it to cell K26. So to do that, we right click on the button and we go to format control. So I just right click on the button there and I go to format control. And then here we have the link cell. We can click on it. So we can click, uh, put our selector in here and then just click on K26. I'm gonna go ahead and type in K26 and then just press F4. So I just typed in K26 and I pressed F4 to make it an absolute cell reference. And then I'm gonna check this box right here that says 3D shading. So that's 10D and then it says, or 10E, it wants us to adjust the alignment so that it's properly aligned with 12. So I'm gonna click okay here. So we have K26 for the link, uh, 3D shading checked, and then we just click okay. Now it wants us to edit the alignment so that it's kind of more evenly aligned with the training at the top level. So I'm gonna hold the left control, I'm gonna click demonstration, I'm gonna hold the left control and click training. So I have both of these buttons selected. And then we have the shape format tab up here. We have the shape format tab up here. We have the arrange group. We're going to click align and we're going to choose the align top option. And what that should do is bump this up to be perfectly in line with the other options here. So let's go ahead and click on that. It might feel like a lot, but it shouldn't be too bad. For the most part, we just drew a shape. We added some text, so nothing too crazy. Number 11, we're going to insert a checkbox in cell C14. So I'm going to go to that developer tab on the ribbon again. And on the insert button right here in the controls group, we have the checkbox, first row, third option, checkbox form control. We're gonna click on that. We're gonna draw it just like it's a shape in the C14 cell. So down here we have cell C14. I'm just gonna draw a shape and it's gonna produce our checkbox there. I'm gonna erase the old text. I'm gonna type in the name health tracking, health tracking, and then I will just click away and then I will right click on it and go to format control. And we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to type in N25 to link this to cell N25. I'm going to press F4 to make it an absolute cell reference. So we just have the absolute cell reference N25 in that cell link option. We're going to check 3D shading and then we're going to check OK. Part E of question number 11 wants us to do just some alignment stuff. So what I'm going to do is make sure health tracking our new checkbox that we just made is selected. I'm going to hold the left control and choose medical building, uh, billing as well. So I have these two selected. I'm going to go to shape forms. I'm going to align bottom. And that the reason I aligned bottom was because my button that I just drew was a little bit above this one. And I wanted this one to adapt to what was here. So since I was a little bit above, I went align bottom. If yours was a little bit lower, you might want to go align top. So just wherever yours is at, adjust it so that it, that it aligns with the button that's already correctly positioned. So getting those lined up can be a little bit tricky and getting them to score correctly can be a little bit tricky. You could just click on it and try to eyeball it and maybe get away with it as long as it's kind of in the correct cell for the most part and approximately sized, something like this. But you